Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about how to introduce Shakespeare to your children. Hopefully all of you have seen at least one Shakespeare play or you've read one of his plays and you're a little bit familiar, but you know, now there are so many amazing books out there and things that you can do to introduce your kids to Shakespeare at a much earlier age. You know, the amazing thing about the arts is that when you look at it, art, everything tells a story. Art paints a story, ballet dances a story, music sings a story, and literature tells a story. Now, an interesting thing about Shakespeare, he was born in Stratford-on-Avon on, uh, in England. He was 52 when he died. Uh, he died on his birthday. He wrote 37 plays, uh, comedies, tragedies, and uh, comedies, tragedies, and histories. Now, <clears throat> this is what he said about his plays. He said, I, your looking glass, will be, and will modestly discover to yourself qualities which you yourself know not of. So basically what he's saying is, look, I have all of these characters in all of my stories, and I'm going to hold a mirror up, that's a looking glass, and he said, you're going to be able to see yourself in one or two or three of my characters in this play, and then in the next play you're going to see, and you're going to see the strengths and weaknesses of your character. And if you follow this character through the entire story, you'll see where he, en or, he or she ends up. So he said, these become cautionary tales. These become learning experiences so that you can look up and you can see where you're headed based on the actions and the things that you are doing. Now, many people say, well, Shakespeare didn't even write his plays. They're written by somebody else. Okay, that's kind of a misinformation because during the time of Shakespeare, the playwrights of that time, they borrowed information all the time from each other. They borrowed plots from each other, they borrowed characters from each other, they borrowed the names of the characters from each other. They were constantly borrowing back and forth, back and forth. There weren't patent laws as there are today that you can't you know, copy anything exactly from anybody. So it was deducted that in some way the Shakespeare was just a copycat or that he stole other people's things or that he never wrote them. Well, that's not true. He wrote all of them. But at that particular time, there was only approximately 140,000 words. So if, if somebody living in that time had slept all of that time and come into our uh, day and age in the 21st century, we have quadruple that amount of words today. So they would have to be basically go back to school and take vocabulary classes. But in those 140,000 words, he produced these amazing 37 plays. So how do you introduce them to your children? Okay, well, there's a series out now, and it's called The Shakespeare Stories. These are fabulous. They can come in a whole entire set of 16 of them. I love the, off, or the illustrator. The illustrations are just kind of fun. They're all in black and white, and they're they're broken up into a lot of really good information. At the very beginning, they go through every character that you're going to meet in the story. Then they give a brief synopsis of the story and they tell you where the story is taking place. Now, if you have an opportunity, what you want to do, again, if, there's, if you're in Ashland, Oregon or in Cedar City, Utah, they both have Shakespearean festivals every summer. So if you're able to take your kids, by all means go. Now, it's pretty compacted because you see approximately three Shakespearean plays per day for a period of, well, you can say they're as long as you want, over, I think, a two or three week period that they have it. But it's very intense. And so, you again, you want to introduce the story to your children. You want to tell them about it. You want to tell them about the characters. And these short little books are perfect for it. And they give great illustrations. The illustrations remind me of some of the early books of Rural Doll, like the Twits and that. They're just done in black and white pencil drawings, as you can see. So they go through and they explain the story. And then you can read the story together out loud as a family. Now, <clears throat> uh, Romeo and Juliet is a huge favorite. This is a great place to start. This is considered a tragedy because at the end, both Romeo and Juliet do die. But this story is about racism and it's about bigotry and it's about all of those important things and you can kind of watch and see. And usually in a Shakespeare play, somebody gets, you know, somebody gets killed. Now in their comedies, they weren't like ha 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 type comedies. They were more considered that at the end of the story, you were learning a very valuable and important lesson, like for instance, the taming of the shrew. 
Okay, so anyway, after you've gone through and you've read this, and if you have an opportunity to actually go to one of the plays and see it in real life with real people, by all means do that. Now, another way you can do it, particularly with Romeo and Juliet, and there's a number of others, they've all been made into movies. With Romeo and Juliet, there's a number of different actors and actresses that have portrayed them throughout the years. So you can show them that. Now, if you do Romeo and Juliet, be sure and show them West Side Story because that's a modern day version of Romeo and Juliet. And then compare, contrast what you've seen. Now, another one, one of the histories, of course, is Richard III. Um, one of the other tragedies is Hamlet. This is an interesting one. One of my favorites is The Merchant of Venice. And this one is about mercy and it's about forgiveness. And the the... The characters are all very, very interesting. So if you pre-read it, then you can kind of tell the stories to younger children. There's also a number of books out there. This one is The Tempest, and there's a whole series within these books. And every year there seems like there's always a calendar that comes out on some aspect of one of the Shakespeare plays. This one happens to be all the heroines of the Shakespeare plays, and it gives some great pictures and if you're talking about these to your children and you have all daughters or whatever talk to them about the heroines talk to them about the different characteristics of these um, of these women so that gives you some ideas um, it just helps you to introduce them into the world of Shakespeare one thing that we did my husband and I did a few years ago is in downtown Los Angeles there's the Hobart Elementary School, and every year the fourth graders put on a full-blown Shakespearean play. They use the exact dialogue from a Shakespeare play. And their teacher, um, Ray Vesquith, he is amazing. He just, I mean, he's the perfect teacher. He's the type of teacher that you want cloned all over the world because of what he demands from these students. Here they are, fourth graders. They have to memorize all their lines, and they put on these in amazing, amazing presentations. If you're in Los Angeles at the time, go get some tickets, go in there, support these fourth graders. You will be blown away of how much information and how much knowledge and understanding they have of Shakespeare. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.